Gaming is one of the most popular platforms in the world to connect with friends and to entertain yourself. Gaming is incredibly popular amongst teens with over 91% of people under the age of 18 playing video games in the United States. Gaming is also a top interest for boys between the ages of 8 and 15, and it's a growing interest for teen age girls as well. Importantly, 8.5% of people between the ages of 8 and 18 are reaching criteria for what would be called pathological gaming, which means that gaming is having a detriment in their life. So in today's video, I want to talk about how we keep gaming to be a healthy thing for teenagers. How do we play in a safe way that doesn't cause problems in our life? What's up everyone, my name is Cam and I'm the founder of GameQueers.com, which is a support community for gamers and their families. My story comes from lived experience. I struggled with gaming myself. And so in today's video, I'm gonna share some strategies to help you avoid the same fate. Now, if you're currently struggling with gaming, you can go on the website gamecores.com and you can reach out for a game plan call. This will be a call with me directly where we can talk about your situation and see if our coaching programs are the right fit for you or your family. All right, so what's the difference between healthy and unhealthy gaming? Healthy gaming is when gaming is a complement to your life. It's something that you do because you're able to connect with friends or you want a sense of achievement, maybe you want to explore new worlds, but it's not causing issues in other areas, such as your relationships, your school, or your career potential. Unhealthy gaming is when gaming begins to impact other areas. So it's the priority in your life. You no longer want to do homework. You no longer want to look for a part-time job. You're isolated from friends and family, and yet you continue the game more and more. If you're curious to see where your gaming falls on a spectrum from healthy to harmful, you can go on gamequiz.com and check out the quiz that we have on our homepage. This will ask you nine different questions and then give you feedback based on your score, but where you might be at. Okay, so how do we keep gaming to be a healthy thing for teens? First, when you're a teenager, it's important that these guidelines are a collaborative effort between you and your parents. Being under the age of 18, it's important for your parents to still be involved in making sure you stay healthy and happy. So first, you wanna make sure that you get schoolwork done before you start to play. Often, transitioning off of games is a challenge. And so if you do start playing before you do your homework, then often you can struggle to actually get to your homework and that leads to various issues, not just at school, but also conflict within the family. It's also important that you take breaks to move around, get some fresh air and to stretch. Sitting in a chair gaming for long periods of time has a detriment to your physical health. And so it's important that even if you're playing that you take regular breaks, go for a quick walk, do some stretches, and just get that nice fresh air. Keep gaming to be in a common area in your home. The more games become an isolated activity in a room by yourself, the easier it is for you to begin to play more excessively and to have less supervision or monitoring. As a teen, you want to have more independence. And that's cool and that's important, but do it in steps. Keep gaming in a common area where you can play and have fun without causing other issues. It's also important that you maintain interactions with your friends in person. So although you might be gaming with friends from real life, it's important that you still spend time face-to-face -face with them doing other activities. This helps you develop good social skills and reading social cues and will help you a lot as you go forward in your life. You also wanna make sure you make time every day for physical activity. This can be like going to the gym or playing sports or just going for a daily walk outside. Speaking of well-being, make sure you stop gaming an hour before bed. This allows your body time to decompress and reduce the level of stimulation your brain has just had so you can fall asleep easier. Maintaining a healthy sleep schedule is crucial for gaming to be a positive thing in your life. And often when gaming becomes a problem, the sleep schedule is one of the first things that you can see as a sign where you're beginning to experience more negative impact. Stick your limits and decide how much is enough. Often games can make you feel like you just wanna play more and more. So you need to know what your limits are and you need to have accountability to make sure that you're reviewing to make sure 
you are sticking to them. You can use things like alarms or timers to help keep you on track. Cause again, it's easy when you're playing games to kind of lose track of time. Stay hydrated and avoid energy drinks and soda and just various other junk foods. And finally, understand safe gaming. Don't give out your personal information and be aware of any strangers you're interacting with online. Often we're playing games with a mix of friends from real life and people we've met online. And I'm not here to say that all people online are bad, but just make sure you understand how to keep yourself safe and that your friends and family are involved in that as well. So those are some tips to keep gaming a healthy activity for you. If you need support to keep gaming safe and fun and in control, then go to gamequiz.com and I'd love to support you. If you're new here, hit like, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. What tip do you have to help people keep gaming a healthy and fun activity and not a problem? Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Peace.